So in the last video, um, we learned about the function based API view over there and we created the CRUD operation using function based API view. So in today's video, we are going to create the um, CRUD operation using class based API view. So almost all the code is going to remain the same, but only the few uh, changes are going to be there. So uh, I would highly recommend you to watch uh, first uh, function based API view video so that you would get the better understanding the how the CRUD API work and everything. I'll link that video in the i button. Okay, so let's proceed and start writing the um, class based uh, API view. So first, let me show you the CLS that, that we are using and the function that we are using. So this is the CLS that, that we are using over here. It's the student model CLS, which has a two field name and role field. We have uh, written the validations over here to check the validations working properly or not. Okay, so um, and there is the student model that we have created, small, simple student model, ID and name and role field over here. Okay, so now we need to start with the function based API view. Till now, till today's video, we have already created three type of CRUD operation. The first one was like a function based view CRUD operation, class based view CRUD operation. In the last video, we created function based API view CRUD operation. And in today's video, we are going to create class based API view CRUD operation. So if you have not watched any of the video, I would highly recommend to you to watch that video because it will give you a detailed idea that how does the CRUD operation work and what does the API um, decorators play over you. Okay, so let's start writing the class based API view. So for that, for what we'll do, we'll create a one more view over you, which will name is class underscore based underscore API underscore view. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll copy the whole function based API view code over you and modify it into class based view over here and we'll go through line by line and I'll explain you what does each and every line means over here. First, what we need to do, we need to also um, mention the URL for the class based API view. So we'll go in the URL and PY file. Okay, we have already created the function based URL, class based URL, function based API view URL. We'll comment the function based API view URL and write for the class based API based URL over here, uncomment this, we will import the class based API view over here, class underscore based underscore API view, we will use this part, and as we know, um, <coughs> since it is a class, we need to convert it into the function, so what we will do, we will class based API view dot uh, API, okay, this is the name of um, this function over here, since this will be in class, so currently this is in function, uh, function because we have imported, copied from the function based API view, this will be in the class format. So what we need to do, we need to write dot as underscore view. Okay. And we'll come over here. We'll, so we won't be needing this uh, at the rate API view because this we would need it in the func uh, function um, based API view over here. We will be needing API view, which we can import using from um, rest underscore framework, framework dot views import API view. Okay and we'll be changing this uh, student API to class class and inside the API view we'll be writing the API view that we imported just now and we won't be doing this if and all we will be writing the function inside the class which is a dev get it will take two arguments self comma request okay so in the request now we are we'll be getting request over here in the same way the request of data will be getting what kind of a data we are getting from the um, front, front end people okay we'll be storing that in python data and we'll be checking if um, are we getting the id field in that if we are getting the id field then we'll be passing i uh, will be um, getting the student model with that id sto storing in the student object and we'll be passing the student object to more student model serializer and be getting that id data and we'll be passing the data in the front end or if you're not getting the id we will be getting all the students and passing to the student models model serializer and writing man equal to true so that we get list of all the objects over here okay so this is the get code over here we'll comment the post and all of the code to check is my get post working properly or not so we'll go to the postman first we need to start the local host over here python manage.py run run server okay everything is working properly we'll go to postman now in the postman to get the single data we'll be passing the id as one and we'll be hitting send button and we are getting the data and to get all the data we, do, we won't be passing any id over here and we'll be hitting the send and as you can see we are getting all the data which are there in our database okay so get is working properly for our single and all part now we need to create the post method over here 
so we'll use the same the same def over here we'll uncomment the post code over here we'll come and write the post instead of get we'll write post okay it will be two arguments self and request in the request we'll be getting the data that we get from the front end and we'll store in the python data and we'll pass that python data as a data argument in the student model cell as well which will now will run is valid which will run all the validation that we have written if the uh, all validation is done and the my response is true then we'll uh, use the save button and save the data okay and we'll pass the response back to the front end people if my validation is false then we'll throw what kind of error we are getting okay so let's check the post method over here we'll go to the postman create entry we'll create one simple entry and let's name it simple oh now nice name by the way simple over here and we'll hit the send button and as you can see we, uh, we have created the simple entry over here okay and we want if you want to confirm the id is 29 we'll come over here and print the id 29 and hit the send button and as you can see the data is created in the database now we need to change like since we created data and we don't like the simple name we'll write something else okay so we'll come over here and use the put method which is used to update the data okay we'll copy this def part and now instead of um, request now uh, in, instead of put we'll use the uh, <laughs> sorry instead of post we'll put the put method over here okay so now we'll be getting the data in the request of data now we'll be checking uh, what uh, data they want to change so we'll be getting id from the front end people okay so we'll retrieve the student model using that id and now we'll be passing the student instance in the student model serializer and the data that we want to change and we'll keep partial equal to true because we don't know because there can be data which uh, there can be data which need to be changed and which not need to be changed for example if my field has two fields name and role field and i'm only passing the name field using partial equal to true it will only change my uh, na uh, name part not the role part if i passed partial equal to false then i have to pass all the field over here okay um then uh, i will be passing that i will be checking if is my data valid or not is it if my data is valid then i'll i'll save the data and pass the response to the front end people if my data is not valid then i'll throw the error over here okay so let's check the put method over here let's go back to our postman update entry 29 we want to change so i'll show you the partial entry over here i don't i won't be passing the role field i will only passing the name so let's pass name as uh oh no not a good name um some good name some good name good name okay it's okay let's hit a send button and as you can see my name has been changed and my role was same as it was before okay so my put enter is also working properly and now we don't uh, like this goof name and all so we'll be deleting this goof entry so for that we'll be writing the delete method over here we'll come use this def part and in <clears throat> instead of put we'll be writing delete now we'll be getting the data which data we want to delete for that we'll be getting the id we'll be getting the student model and we'll be deleting the student model okay and we'll be passing a custom message that your data has been deleted so we'll come in the delete entry over here we'll passing the 29th id over here and as you can see the message is your data is deleted if you want to confirm we'll go to uh, all and we if we can see id 29 and if we hit send button as you can see it's getting an error which means that doesn't is and it's showing over here that the student matching query does not exist because it has been already been deleted okay so for that if you don't want error over here what we can do we can um encapsulate this thing inside try and in the except part over here we'll write student dot does not exist it will check if the if it exists or not if it does not exist then we'll make another response over here um message what what message will write um there is no such student model with this id and if you want to pass the id over here we'll use the f string and we'll pass the id over here okay and we'll return this response and we'll return this response over here okay so, so now let's go again back and check let's do this thing um for the entry delete part 
since we have deleted this thing uh, let's say for example you want to delete 100 months let's hit the send button as you can see there is no such student model with the id 100 over here okay so everything is working perfectly fine you can use this try except in the um, get method also to check if the id is there or not okay i think i hope you might have got the clear understanding that how does the crud api work using the class based api view okay so i hope you all like the video so please press the like button if you like the video if comment your thought in the comment section so i would know that you are understanding what i am teaching over here okay please subscribe to the channel so it helps me a lot it gives me it boost my motivation and help me to make more such videos for you guys okay so we'll meet in the next video till then take care